Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you how I do this false miter and bore the holes for these rails here. Uh, this is the most challenging thing on this chair, I, I, I guess it is. Uh, most challenging to me at least. And uh, uh, and there's a you know few reasons. Not only so the so the joint you know is 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 here, and there's a tenon on the end of that, which you, you see in the plans. And uh, then you bore a hole up into the crest rail, and and uh, then have to get a good fit here. That's the that's the trick. But the other thing is that I like this. Uh, top rail and the bottom rail matches it crown. So uh, let me grab, should have had that crest rail out here, let me grab that crest rail and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's the crest rail right here and these knobs are here to give us some meat so we can carve this false miter. Uh, so if, if the joint was 90 degrees to this bending plane, then this would tip down here. Now that's an exaggeration, but it would tip down because the posts lean back. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be, to have a crowned look to it. So it's got to be rotated like that. So we have to figure out where that hole's going to be bored and the angle that that hole's going to be bored. Uh, so that's the first thing that, that's the first thing that we'll do. So let's, uh, we'll go over to the plans and look at that and uh, first we'll look at the elevations and the false miter up there and then we'll look at the, uh, um, the illustrations. All right, so uh, here in the illustrations you can see the 3 8 tenon dotted line going up into the, the, the crest rail. Over here you can see it drawn also and uh, then the joint down here then the way this thing gets carved is, uh, I guess I've heard it called a, a, a duck bill. It's kind of puckered, and, and uh, so you need a little bit more meat to be able to carve that, which is comes from that inch and a quarter um, knob that's on the end of the, the crest rail that we have turned. Um, okay, so I'm going to change this out and go to the illustrations, and then we'll see what we're going to do. Uh, all right, so the very first thing we'll do is here in figure three, I've got to measure the rake angle. So I'm using the bench, I'm going to use the bench as my reference, the front edge of, of the bench, and that's real important. And what do I say here? Place post in their mortises, okay, you got to do that, with the orientation marks touching the sight lines. These are the orientation marks that we had over here in figure two. And it says measure splay and rake angles for each individual post. And uh, the post should be lightly touching the front edge of the bench. So, yeah, you don't want to push hard up against the front edge of the bench. It'll probably change your angle some there. That's why I put lightly. And, uh, and then you measure the splay angle the, down here uh, with the T-bevel square parallel with the front edge of the bench. Of course, up here it's perpendicular. Uh, then... We'll go over here to figure four and set up to drill for the crest rail. And you see there's a lot of stuff going on in this illustration uh, right here. Um, we got a little close up over here of this of this knob showing this uh, seven eighths uh, shoulder that I'm going to bore and then come back with the three eighths tenon. And that's what's going on over over here. So, uh, so this one's a little more difficult to show in this illustration. And hopefully, between the illustration and what I'm showing you on this video, you'll be able to be able to do it. So, uh, okay. Well, let's uh, drill some holes. Okay. So I put the post in and lined up the marks uh, and. Uh, now I've pushed it back up against this bench. Now this bench, I took a hand plane and flattened this bench to make sure it's nice and even all the way around. Uh, and so the next thing I'm going to do is make sure those are at the same height. 
and you can do that a lot of ways. You can do it with a compass, you can do it with a tea bevel square, just something like that right there. That's a real good way to do it. Uh, you can try to measure it, although something like this is easier than measuring it. So I'll just use this little thing right here and uh, let's see. It's a, if I can see good enough, that's my problem, being able to see. Okay, so they're, they're just at the exact same spot. If they weren't, you see them from the chair, from the bottom, down on the, on, on the chair. So, got them in the same spot. Now I need some lines on these posts in order to measure the angle. Right like that. So one way of getting the lines on there is you can take, uh, like I take this framing square and then just put a little graphite right on it where it's going to rub against the post and right there on that one and making sure you're up against both posts like that. Like that. Now put your mark on there. And you might have to take a pencil and darken it a tad bit. Okay. And then put the mark on the other side too. You know, because you're going to measure both of them individually. Uh, but I've already done that on that other side. So I'm going to show you that. And then we get a piece of paper to where we can take notes and uh, so we're on the left side here. I'd say which side by sitting in the chair. So I'm on the left side and I'll measure the rake angle first. Now you want to make sure that you're using the front edge as your reference. So when you're measuring the rake angle, you're perpendicular to this edge. And when you're measuring the splay angle, you're parallel to that edge. Okay. So uh, perpendicular and there. You measure it with your protractor or if you got one of these you measure it with this. And so I'm sitting at 18 degrees. So the splay angle on the left one is 18 and then you come over here and read the, uh, the right one. And it's at 18. So I'll write that down, which I actually already have. And I'm going to add 3 degrees, because the 3 degrees is where that, that crown comes from. If you don't add the 3 degrees, that rail is going to be like that. But you add 3 degrees to it, and it just crowns it just slightly, about like that. So you're going to add three degrees to that to that angle, and uh, now let's look at the display angle. Now the way I do this, the technique that I use in all of this, comes from a lot of different sources. It's stuff that that I came up with. It's stuff that I've picked up from other chair makers and uh, some students. Uh, so I like to try to give credit to where I get a lot of this information, but sometimes it's just impossible because it comes from so many different sources. So just let it be said that I didn't make all this up myself. Uh, now, looking at the display angle. Okay. 
look at that again. Really close. You want to get display angle just, well, you want to get both of them right, but display angle especially. Okay, and it's right. So that one is 9.5, and now we'll measure this one. This one's just a tad bit less. This one's running, I believe, nine. So we got a little difference in left to right on the uh, on on the display angle, and uh, that is fine. It's. Uh, it's whatever you come up with. Okay, so now uh, we're finished with this setup right here, and now I'm going to set up to bore those uh, those holes in the crest rail. Well, I've set up here, and I'm going to attempt to explain what I've done uh, and what I'm getting ready to do. So, first off, back when I had the chair out here and the post and top of the post, I forgot to measure the distance between the top of the post. So be sure to do that. And I did that. And mine came out to be uh, 18 and 5 eighths. So you want to measure the distance not at the top of the tenons, but down at the bottom of the tenons, right at the shoulder, because that's where that point is, right there. <clears throat> Next, you have to get that point over here on these knobs and so they have to be 18 and 5 eighths apart but they also have to be rotated around this the three degrees that we've added and that's kind of tricky so in other words it would be easy if you were drilling right at the top, but we're not drilling. We're not drilling right at the top. And, uh, well, or the 21 degrees, excuse me. You've got to rotate the 21, 18 plus 3. I looked wrong there, the 3 degrees. Mm -hmm. So this whole 21 right here. So the way that I do that, there are probably a bunch of ways to do it. If you find a better one, write me and let me know. But anyway, the way that I do it, I took this bevel boss and I put it right up against the front of that square to where those two edges are against each other and where it touches on that knob is where that point is. Okay. And so then I would draw that line along it. My neighbors are having fun. They're visiting. So, you can hear him laughing, that's why I said that. Uh, so anyway, uh, you draw that line right there, draw the line right here, and now I have to find that 18 and 5 eighths. So, I got it up, up here. I was able to take a, a, a rule like this right here and just lay it across up on the top and get it. But as you come around this way, you get closer together. But at least it gives me a starting point. So then I'm able to come out here and now you see that that 18 and 5 eighths point I might just be confusing you with all this stuff. That would be the top. And the 18 and 5 eighths point should be straight perpendicular off of that plane right there, which it is. Okay. So there we are at 21 degrees around this and at 18 five eighths. And now Mike forgot to mention this very important thing. There's a 3 16th shim underneath here because of that to keep this level. Now there's other ways of doing that. Other ways of doing this whole thing. This is the way I'm doing it. 
Okay. Now I've got the marks. I've got it set up. Now I have to put my bevel squares up. So this is what you see here. So this is the splay angle. Make sure you got it coming back this way. It is real easy to get that thing turned around that way right there. You don't, don't want that. It'd be bad. <laughs> It'd be bad. And then for the splay angle, it's that right there. Now, you can put the T-bevel square over here where the mirror is, but the problem is that this blade gets in the way of what you see in the mirror. So if you set it way over here, you can see it in the mirror, and you don't have this in the way. So, okay. This one's parallel with the front of the bench. This one is perpendicular with the front of the bench. Okay. Now what I need to do to get a, to create a good shoulder for the shoulder on the post to match up to, to go up against, I'm going to create that with this uh, 7 8 inch Forstner bit. And then with the exact same setup, I'm going to switch out to this 3 8 brad point with a little extension on it so I can get the angle better and bore it. So we're going to have to move the camera here to get a, a better angle on this so you can see what I'm doing, but uh, I believe I've explained it all and we're ready to drill. Okay. Okay, so getting ready to bore here. Now, you don't want to start at the angle. If you do, what will happen, if you're using a Forstner bit like this, is these knickers over here will be touching and you'll just skid off and probably ruin your center. So you have to start, there's that hole, there it is. You have to start just as perpendicular to it as you can and then you'll achieve this. Yeah this uh, splay angle. Now the, the rake angle is fine. You want it uh, right now, but I, if I move that way, then uh, it better be, the drill bit better be turning when I do that. So. So all you want is for the bit to uh, to score enough for that shoulder to be on, okay? And now, I didn't do it perfect. You might be able to see that, so I'll have to admit to it. It's going to work, but I'm forward. I came around that a bit too much, or I would it would be even here and here if it wasn't but it's not, it's not even, and uh, so, uh, so, anyway, that's okay, that's okay, I make mistakes too, and I figure out how to fix them, so, uh, now, I'll switch things around, I'll bore this side while you're not looking, well, no, no, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. I'll watch out, make one little mistake, and you got the next one following right behind it. Have to clean this out right here. So now, while I got the same setup, I'll bore with the uh, with the three eighths. Might not have used my good scratch off for that. So when drilling with that Forstner bit, creating that flap, you don't have to be exactly on dead on your angles until the last little turn with the Forstner bit. But here with this one, you want to be right from the get-go. So let's uh, get that thing lined up.
Now, while you're not looking, I'm going to turn all this thing and set it up over here, and uh, then we get to see how good we did. We'll test it. Okay.